Okay. Hello, everybody. We are live. Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. Danny's still playing around. Trying to get yeah. everything's got to be just right. Uh, Look at that. Coastal Redwood says it shows your package will arrive Monday. So thank you. Yes. We've got quite a few things over the last oh, week or two. Yeah. And we forget to show everything because we had so much going on last week and then this week. There's so much till I'm not even uh, going to show it, but we've okay. got cards and letters and seeds and books, books and, and Cindy sent us a sent bunch of... Sent us a care package there. Yeah. I ordered some stuff and she sent some stuff. So we have magnesium lotions, magnesium salts. We have all kinds of stuff for Danny. And then I ordered some soaps and the peony soap, P-E-O-N-Y. Peony. Peony? Yeah, like a flower. It is a flower, yeah. yeah. I don't know how you say it. I like that. That smells so good, y'all. So y'all check out Cindy's Herbal... No, Cindy's Secret Garden, right? Cindy's Secret yeah, Garden. Cindy's Secret no, Secret, okay. not Secret, Sacred. Sacred Garden, that's yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave my rabbits uh, in the barn. I'm not going to put them outside because I don't have time to fool with rabbits outside. I mean... These are strictly for manure. Uh, we probably will, to be honest, one and I talked about this today. We probably will sell most of the babies when they're born. We'll, we'll keep, keep we'll keep a few, but predominantly we'll probably sell them because we're mostly interested. We don't need the meat. We're mostly interested in the fertilize. And we won't breed them, but just like maybe three or four times a year, yeah. maybe three. Because we don't need them like ever six to eight weeks or whatever. Right. That's too much. We did yeah. that once before and we had we got oh, over them with rabbit meat. We had rabbit meat running out of our ears. I mean, it was... So we're only going to breed them. They're going to come to us bred. Yeah. So that'll be our first babies. And we will decide out of those which ones we want to keep for us. And then we probably will sell some. And we'll wait a while and we'll breed them again. Mainly we wanted... The manure. That's our. That was our biggest goal. Is because the manure was fantastic on everything. Uh, people talking about the echo fan behind us. Uh, uh, this this unit actually has a blower on it itself, but we don't hardly ever turn it on. The echo fan does a fantastic job. I mean, it moves plenty of air for us. It moves 75 cubic feet of air per minute. Mm -hmm. um, and it it does a really good job. I and mean, it doesn't take any electricity. That's the main thing we like about it. All right, organic treatment for scale on trees. Ms. Gale asked that. Uh, if you got scale on trees, it would be uh, in, an oil uh, an oil emulsion, I think is what they call it. It's a fruit tree oil spray. It's not toxic or anything like that. It's just, it's just an oil spray for fruit trees. I mean, you should be able to use it uh, during the winter months because that's when scale comes on. Uh, Bobby says, hello from, is that DeRitter? DeRitter, Louisiana. I'm in the DeRitter. The Bobby and Heather. Yeah. And I had to go there and prepping, pick up my brother-in-law one time when he came in from the military. Prepping Survival is in Georgia. Peace of My Heart Homestead. We got a lot of names. No, yeah. there's a, no, there's a Christ Christ Homestead. <laughs> Danny, I watched a channel, said he saw a water change direction up on the Washington coast where he lives, and it does this early when winter is going to come early. So there is backup. Um, that's but, B. Crouch. Yeah. That was not the Crouch. That's not the Crouch family. Crouch, Crouch Ranch. <laughs> that's just B. Crouch. Yeah, two different uh, things. Two okay. different things. Uh, yeah, guys, they's, uh, I'm fixing, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I was going to talk about this a little bit on porch time, but I'll mention a little bit of it here. I'm backing away from some of the uh, groups and uh, stuff that I'm actually affiliated with because I'm going to give you some Bible on this. Uh, Solomon makes the comment in scripture with a lot of wisdom comes a lot of sorrow and I am so embedded in so many different things in so many different places that I'm fixing to start backing out of them because I'm I'm tired of knowing more than I should know okay I'm uh, 
we're going to keep up with stuff, but not to the extent we've right. been doing. And we're going to try and live our lives. The stress is one thing. The stress is, got to get out from I've got to get out under the stress, guys. Because when I know things like, I got real close friends that live in Fresno, California, and all these kind of places like this. And when I'm watching uh, a, a news channel in California this afternoon who says that the insurance companies are trying to figure out what they're going to do in California because they uh, they found out that the water is going to come in and towns, uh, cities like Fresno is going to go underwater and all these kind of places. The insurance companies are already trying to figure out what to do before all this happens. So, you know, I, I'm just tired of knowing. I got friends that live in these places and 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 I I don't want to think about it. You know, I'd rather not think about it. And I'll tell them, you know, what I know. If but. I can't make them make a decision or anything. And, it, and it's not just Fresno. It's all coastlines. The insurance companies are trying to figure out what they're going to do. And guys, I... Well, like after Katrina. Yeah. A lot of people on the coastlines of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, uh, they all got messed up big time. And the insurance companies figured a way out of 99% of it. Yeah. I mean, they paid what they had to pay, but they used all kinds of clauses and stuff to get out of it. And y'all, y'all don't depend on all that. Uh, just saying it can go away tomorrow. Been there, done that. Insurance is a joke. I'm going to tell you. Uh, whenever a lot of the Katrina stuff happened down here, uh, they told people said, uh, well, your your uh, your damage was caused by flooding. Uh, you don't have flood insurance. You have wind damage, and I mean, they it didn't matter. They figured out loopholes everywhere to get out from under paying for most of it. Lucy says she tried my sweet cucumber relish, and it turned out beautiful and delicious. Thank you. Uh, I've, you know, I I backed out of some stuff here a while back. Y'all saw me talk about it on a live stream one night, and then now I'm actually backing out of a lot of groups I'm in. I mean, everything just I'm just getting away from it. Do I have to use greenhouse plastic or can I use plastic sheeting from Home Depot 6 mil? No, you have to have greenhouse plastic. You can use it, but after a year, it's going to crumble up and it's going to fall into little tiny pieces all over your yard everywhere. I mean, it's just, you might as well just go ahead and get the greenhouse plastic and do it once and do it and get it over with. Because greenhouse plastic will last up to five or six years. It'll last six years if you put a shade cloth on it. Larry. Uh, thank you, Larry. Thank you. Um, yeah, ours is... Danny's is three years old, and mine will, yeah, mine's, mine's going on there. Yeah, mine's three years old, just as good as it was the day I put it on there. And mine will be up three years in September, I think. Are, am I not right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's been that long, but yeah, it really is. Uh, Gary says... It's, uh, right. Rebecca, it's not going to come from rain. The oceans are going to rise. Yeah, the, you're not going to get as much rain according to what we're No, doing. your your rain is going to be less. Um, I, it's, it's really a weird something. It's kind of strange. I mean, it has to deal with the Antarctica. And guys, there's, gosh, there's so much stuff. Uh, we're not going there tonight. Tonight no, ain't for that anyway. Tonight's not for that. I'll save that for porch time. And, um, uh, how can I tell when Star of David Okra is ready to pick? When it's about three inches long. I'm just going to give you a heads up when it's about three inches long and you can reach up and take your finger and pull it over and it just pops off real easy. It's ready to pick. Is rabbit manure good fertilized for potted citrus trees? Yes. If so is using pellets or tea better? Uh, the, the pellets are, uh, the pellet fertilized is just fine. You can sprinkle it around the bottom of the tree, pile it up around it, and every time you water it, it just makes a tea going into the soil. I mean, you, you don't have to turn it into the soil. Yeah. Let's see. Is it true you can't have a garden near a walnut tree? Yes, that's true. Walnut trees, the roots on them give off a hormone. Uh, I don't even know how you pronounce this. J U N something real. J U N G O N E or however you say it. Um, but it gives out. And eucalyptus trees are the same way. Walnuts and eucalyptus is both give off this chemical in the soil that prevents other things from growing around them. ABC said they just canned Deep South Salsa today. Yay. Yes. Uh, how do you store canning lids? I've just got mine in a the cabinet. They're just in the, in the cabinets in there. We don't do it anywhere. Any I don't do anything way. special. I just have a dedicated cabinet that I've got them in. Uh, how can I tell when pears are ready? Put your thumb 
where the stem sticks out of the pear, where it hooks the tree at, put your thumb up there and mash in on it. If it's uh, soft, then it's ready because pears ripen from the inside out. They don't ripen from the outside in. If you wait till they fall to the ground, they will be rotten, usually. And, uh, or they'll be so close to being ready, you gotta do it that day. Just go ahead and start pulling your thumb around the top of them, around that stem. If it's soft, go ahead and pull them. What fertilizer do you put on strawberries and how often? Oh man, strawberries, oh, they require a lot of nitrogen. Uh, any high nitrogen, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna prepare your bed way in advance, you can use uh, blood meal. But you have to understand with organic fertilizers, when you use them, you're just wasting your time, really, because uh, if you plan on getting anything out of it up front, because you get about 8% out of it originally when you first use it, and the other 92% of it uh, doesn't even begin to start working for at least four months, and then it starts working gradually. So, um, Somebody's asked, did I reuse my canning lids? Not no. pressure canning and not uh, water bathing. I use them like just to put on uh, something and put in the refrigerator or something like that, but I do not recan with them, and I have a video coming up. I think it's Monday. It's going to be on crazy days where I compare Ball, Four Jars, and Superb. Y'all, some of y'all heard me talk about a blue seal. Well, the company decided to send me some more and asked me to do an another review. And y'all going to be wanting to see this review. Um, it'll be on crazy days. And I think it'll be Monday. Uh Somebody's asking, how do I know when my potatoes are ready to pick so my plants are turning brown? Do I keep watering? No, do not keep watering. Uh, wait till your plants. You can go ahead and dig them technically, but they will last longer if you let your plants completely die. And But if, it's, if, it, if it starts raining a lot, go ahead and get them out of the ground because they'll rot on you. But quit watering them. Do not water them anymore. Do you have to have a rooster for your hens to lay? No, you do not have to have a rooster for, for hens to lay. You do not. But you have to have one if you want them to if set on to. eggs and produce baby chicks. Uh, have I um, used the reusable canning lids? I have not, but Danny I have asked before. I have. I had about a 50% success rate with them, and it just wasn't what I was interested in. I didn't want to waste my food. But now I did um, buy some. I have some in my yeah, stash. We just have them. Just in case. We, we have them. Just in case. Yeah. Um, I was, somebody that had a comment right up above said, um, you can't, you can go down these rabbit holes and you can't unsee what you see. Yeah. And you also can't unhear what you hear and you can't unknow what you know. So that's where I'm at. My mind right now, there's so many secrets that's out there that I'm privy to that's ha going to happen. I can't unknow that. And it bothers me because I have lots of friends, I have family, I have acquaintances that and it's, they're it's, all going to be destroyed and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, it's almost like knowing the bridge is out and just you can warn people all day long and they if they don't want to listen to you, they're just going to keep falling off the bridge. People are that way now and so you have to pick and choose what you say. Uh -huh. Pinch Runner said, uh, uh, my four foot tall eggplants still have tons of flowers and still no eggplants, still asking for help. It sounds like you've got no pollinators. Uh, if you've got flowers and you're not having any eggplants, you, it's not pollinating. I would start hand pollinating if it was me, just to, just to see. Uh, Lori said they got their EMP shields this week. Yay! We have um, one more thing to put an EMP shield on, and that's my ranger. Yeah. Everything else is taken care of, and uh, we did the house, the barn, generator, tractors. Yeah. Every piece of equipment car, on our place. Car, truck, and Danny, yours. Yeah. Your ranger's got our one. Our ranger's got one. Mine is the only one we're waiting. They, they come out with a new little smaller one that should fit on a ranger, Yeah. and we're waiting on that one. And... Um, so we've kind of protected everything. How far above sea level will be safe, TikTok says? Well, the first event is going to be around 45 to 47 foot to be safe. 
The second event, which will happen later on, uh, will be around 300 feet. So it, it's, I'm at 300 feet, you know, so I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a, how, I, I don't know if my ground will raise, if it will lower. I don't know what will happen. I mean, I may not even be here when it happens, so I'm not even going to worry about it. Uh, somebody asked this question a couple of times. How long do you have to let bean, seed, bean seeds dry before replanting them? Technically, you don't have to let them dry very long at all. As a matter of fact, you can replant green pea seeds, and they'll come right back up. As a matter of fact, they'll come up faster than a dry one will. So We do that sometimes when we plow our uh, Danny dip bush, bush hogs or something, yeah. the peas down, and then this, they'll come right back up. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of times if you're going to be canning your peas and you uh, shell them out and put them in the refrigerator and cover them up with a damp rag, if you don't get to them the next day, by the third day, they'll already be sprouting in the, the container in the refrigerator. Yeah. Did we see what happened in Utah today? To be honest with you, I haven't turned on the computer all day. I haven't turned on the TV. I don't turn. I haven't listened to any news. I've been busy all day. How many acres of land do we have? We have ten acres left that we uh, still use. Uh, now we don't use all ten of it for gardening. We have cattle and we have barns and sheds and houses and you know cabins and all kinds of stuff. I have little green balls with seeds inside my potato leaves. What is this? Uh, but don't, that is a, that's called potato seeds. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> like to experiment with them and replant them. But I'll tell you, it takes like three to four years to get potatoes out of that. And then they may not be worth eating. Uh, they may have a bad taste on it. So, I mean, I have them on mine. I don't even worry about it. I just throw them away. I mean, because it's not. But if you wanted to experiment and had the time and everything, you could do it. I mean, you can replant them. Do you plant cover crops? Yes. I plant cover crops every year. Uh, we use red crimson clover on our whole property. We use ryegrass. We uh, Oregon ryegrass. We use uh, uh, dwarf Siberian kale. Uh, we use broadleaf mustard. These are some of our cover crops that we use. We use different ones in different places for specific reasons. What when seed saving? I'm... How do you prepare squash and tomato? and pepper seeds well tomato seeds are different from pepper seeds can just be shelled out and put on a plate uh, tomato seeds have to go through a fermentation process to get rid of the coating that's on the outside of them squash you let the squash get completely full grown uh, i just did some here the other day uh the uh, cozazel squash uh zucchini squash and they just you let the squash mature uh take them out of the squash let them dry on a plate you're done. Somebody asked, have we seen the full moon? I actually took a picture of it this morning. Uh, we, we get up really early. Yeah, this is the last one. it was a one. beautiful full moon earlier. And so, I, yeah, I, yeah, I actually took pictures. Have your doctors considered... Keratinemia since you eat sweet potatoes every day. Um, no, I don't... My skin's not turning orange. Um, I've he been, really doesn't eat... I really don't eat that much of them. I mean, uh, uh, I went through this with my wife that passed away with um, because we drank carrot juice a lot, and our uh, our oncologist, you know, just told us to be careful not to get too much. He said, "It won't hurt you. Your skin will just turn orange." Yeah. Um, somebody said, "Will sweet potatoes still still produce if a critter eat the leaves off?" Uh, we did a video here a couple of years ago about when the deer ate all of ours off. It might have been last year. It might have been last year. Um, when the deer ate all the leaves off of ours, and they made sweet potatoes, but they weren't very big. They didn't do as well as they normally would have. What about cherry and peach pits to make them sprout? I'm not sure. I um, seed maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, you're talking about the seeds out of them. The best thing to do is to take and get you a five-gallon bucket, put you some oak leaves in it, or maple leaves or something other and uh, wet them down really, really good, and put those peach seeds or, or whatever, any kind of seeds, apricot, it doesn't matter, nectarine, put them down in it underneath those leaves, and just keep the leaves wet all the time, and they'll sprout in half the time. 
Uh, Stacy, thank you. She said she enjoys Amy's channel, Raising Ronies. That's my daughter. Uh, they've had a lot going on, and she hadn't done a lot of videos in the last two or three weeks. She's getting the kids back in school and uh, all kinds of stuff going on, but I, she's popping up every now and then. Any sugar cane for sale this year? We don't know yet. Uh, we've got a bumper crop, but I don't know just yet because we're not at that point. It won't come till probably around October, uh, the end of October. So I, I have no clue yet. Hey, Dale. I see Dale Wheeler, the one that did our thumbnail yeah. for the live streams. He's in here today. Uh, Full of hopes as I accidentally pressure can meat in pints for 90 minutes. Are they ruined? No. No. They're just cooked a little more than they would be if you just took them out at 75 minutes. Um, I do that quite often. I look at, I'll put stuff in pints and I'll glance down and see the quarts. And it's usually not five to 10 minutes. It's not a big deal. Oh. Um. Uh, one person here, uh, not a real farm. Oh, Jan says my tomato. I watched that Jan. I, that uh, that one that was so big that weighed a pound <laughs> and something. Uh, that was amazing. And even your brandy wine. I mean, it was a it was a big tomato. Uh, tomato. But that other one, what was that? What she have? Ox heart or one of them there that was so so I large. I didn't see it. I was it in was, the kitchen. But oh, I just was, walked by. My granddaughter was here helping me clean, and she walked by when Danny was watching it, and she goes. Oh my! Wow! And they, I said, I come in here. I said, what are you talking about? And they said, well, Jan at Not a Real Farm was weighing this tomato that was over a pound. And I says, wow. <laughs> New to gardening and homesteading, Kelly says, what is a bumper crop and a cover crop? A bumper crop just simply means you had a, an excess of whatever you planted. They've done really well. You got lots of tomatoes, lots of squash, lots of cucumbers, lots of sweet potatoes, lots of corn. Um, a cover crop is during the winter months, instead of your ground just being plain so soil out there with nothing on it, you plant something that will grow in cold weather like uh, greens or kales and, or, or winter rye grasses and stuff like that. And you turn it in in the spring as green manure and it puts nitrogen back into your soil. Have you been uh, getting any rain? We get uh, about a quarter of an inch a day. I mean, that's about it. I mean, we don't get enough to... It's good. But it's perfect for the gardens. Our gardens are flourishing. God is so good. Now, the pond, no, the pond's still going down. But, I mean, the gardens are blowing out at the seams. Do apples make pig meat taste better? Well, yes. They do. We, um, we do sweet potatoes. We do sweet potatoes. We do. Uh, we had pears last year we fed our pigs. We feed them sugar cane, all kinds of stuff like that. We, we just call it making our own sweet and sour pork before we butcher it. I have sweet potatoes growing in the same place I have regular potatoes. Will they survive? Yes. Is, Is it too late to plant running in strong, string, string beans in zone eight? Uh, no, it's not too late. You can still plant them. You can get a fall crop. Yeah. Um, we have our, what what's that? Top ground sweet potato? We have above what's ground that? sweet potatoes. Ground. The Thelma Sanders. Uh, guys, this vine's done nothing since spring. And here in the last couple of weeks, they have took off. They are probably 40 and 50 foot running all through the woods. They're running out where the cows are. On we got fences. on fences. I mean, they're taking over the woods. And literally, we have little sweet potatoes. We call them sweet potatoes. They're actually a winter squash. Um, but they are doing fantastic. My daughter Maggie does not have a, a YouTube channel. Somebody was asking. She wants to know what you're drinking. This is my, it's going to be a crazy. It's going to be one of those crazy days. It's my tumbler that we have for sale over on Etsy. And I am drinking an orange soda. It's an orange cream soda. Because we need the little containers for the rabbit cages. We, um, we knew when we bought the rabbit waters that the little bottles were too small. 
So I told Danny I would sacrifice and drink the yeah. orange cream sodas out of the bottles so that um, we can collect up enough bottles for my rabbits to have um, waters. The question has been asked, what is a natural solution for grasshoppers that are eating up their stuff? Uh, the best thing we found was plain old flour. Just plain flour. If you just sprinkle it on your plants, now make sure it's plain flour, not self-rising and not masa or anything like that. Just plain old flour and the grasshoppers will eat it and the paste will turn into, it'll, it'll clog up their insides and they'll die. How is the corn doing? The corn is doing pretty good. I mean, I hate it's in all different stages. Some of it's two foot high, some of it's two inches high. <laughs> I mean, it makes it but hard. It's nice. It looks nice. It makes it hard. I can't plow it. And but it might be that when it starts coming in, you'll have some ears off and on. Yeah. Instead of having it all ready at one time, it might give us a little bit. What else can you feed pigs for better tasting meat? Acorns. Uh, acorns is acorns makes a pig really fat, and but the fat is kind of like jelly like. And about two weeks before you go to butcher it. If you can give them some whole kernel corn, that'll firm up the fat. And throw in, if you got some old jars of jelly that you just, you know, uh, maybe it's expired or it's been in your cabinet too long or something, just throw some jelly in there. We do that with ours. We give them all kinds of sweets. Uh, yes, I do have my candy corn collection. Uh, my granddaughter and I just took and put it in the spare bedroom and rearranged everything in here. She likes to rearrange, so... She's been redoing my house somewhat. <laughs> Chris White says, Danny, have you tried water hyacinths in the pond? And no, and I will not. My daddy put them in his pond, and in about two years, you couldn't fish in it. They literally took the whole pond over, and they got the big old pod that comes up on top of it with all the little, looks like little acorns in it, which florists little. Um, them things that fall over and all them little acorn things that get in the water and they just kept coming up and finally it just took the whole pond over. You can't even tell there's a pond. You down can't there. even tell there's a pond down there now. When you look through the woods, it's just green with a big old white flower sitting up on top of them. It's kind of cute, but I mean, it's pretty. Not, if you want to fish, it's yeah, not. You can't fish. No, you can't fish in it. My apple tree has a severe aphid infestation. What do you recommend? Uh, just. Soapy water is what we use on the aphids. We take a water uh, sprayer and, and just mist soapy water up on it and just let them set for a little while and then come back with a water hose and just spray them off. Allison said get peaches for the pigs. They really love the sweet Oh, peaches. they do. Oh, p yeah. Any fruit that's Any fruit. past its prime, yeah. pigs will enjoy it. Mr. Danny, my first time growing peaches and cream corn is it's doing great it's over eight, eight foot, foot and tons of ears oh, right. lucy that's great to hear that uh may, may says we need rain in texas yeah a lot we everybody's needing some Fed rain. Up patriot says they're baking alive in texas just got a little sprinkle the other day just enough to make it stick to your shoes well if you're in south texas in the next couple of days you're going to get some rain but central and north texas guys i don't there, I'm going to tell you why. Let me say this before we go much further. The government is after two states. One is Texas. The other one is Kentucky. Okay? I'm not going to go into any kind of depth on that. Let me just tell you, there's an agenda for Texas and Kentucky. So just watch the weather, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. How do you test sunflower seeds to eat? How do you treat them to eat? Okay, that's a treat. Oh, you just shell them out, let them dry. You can put them in the oven and kind of like lightly parch them with a little bit of salt on them if you like salt uh but that's basically about it just let them dry make sure they dry good my tomatoes aren't producing much what nutrients do they need or should i just count my losses uh with well, the heat hot. <laughs> it depends on how hot it is anything above 85 degrees tomato plants do not set their blooms uh, they may have tomatoes on them and they'll stay green forever they will not ripen in, in intense heat uh, your best bet, if you got big tomatoes, just take them off, bring them inside, and wrap them up in a newspaper and put them in a dark place. My prepper journey says Houston just got some rain. Yeah, Houston's going to get it. Um, uh, it's going to go down toward Brownsville. All that down through there is going to get some rain. Somebody uh, wants to know your opinion on quail. 
Corral's pretty good if you live in town. I mean, I don't recommend it for us living out in the country because it's too labor intensive for us. Uh, it don't provide enough meat and the eggs just don't add up for us. Uh, we can get a lot more eggs from chickens and we get a lot more meat from chickens and turkeys and, and a lot less feed than we do quail. So, but if you live in town, it's a great alternative meat source. Uh, somebody's asked him about eggplant. I really don't have any good eggplant recipes because we hardly ever grow it. I tried and we get just a few. Uh, the only thing I did one year when I had an excess is I've used tomatoes and peppers and onions and eggplant and made a spaghetti sauce out of it. I added the eggplant into my spaghetti sauce. So you can add it into things like that and most people will never know the difference. Uh, Lucy was asking, said, Danny, how are you doing? I hope you're taking it easy. You know, the honest, the honest opinion is this. Uh, I went to the doctor. I went to my primary care doctor. And uh, he and I have known each other for, I knew him when he came to this country. Let me put it that way. And uh, we, we've been dear friends. He's a born again believer. Uh, married a very dear friend of mine. Uh, he and I had a long talk in the doctor's office the other day. I told him, I said, sir, look, this is the bottom line. I've got doctors all over the world looking at my paperwork. So let's get this right. I've been doing this for 11 years. I'm tired of it. You know, my irregular heartbeat is not normal. Uh, something's wrong. I want to know what to do. And he went over all my paperwork and he has advised me. He told me, he says, I'm not going to give you a prescription because I know you're not going to take it. He said, you don't take prescriptions. And he said, so it's going to be useless for me to write you a prescription. He said, so let's look at something natural to try. So he told me to try the uh, compression stockings on my legs from my hips down to my toes. He told me, he says, make sure you... Up now why he told you that? Because well, he I'm going to get you there. Oh, okay. He got, to ask he got to asking me all kinds of questions. He said, uh, does your legs swell above your socks and stuff like this? And I said, yeah, my legs swell above my socks when I wear them during the day. He said, okay, he said, I think we're about to get there. He said, the blood is pooling up in the lower part of your calves of your legs. He said, do you have any bruising around your ankles, any purplish or anything like that? I said, yes, I do, but I broke both my ankles. So my circulation is very poor around my ankles. And he said, okay, he said, I think I know where we're going with this. He said, the blood's pooling up in the lower parts of your legs. And when you stand up, your heart can't get the blood from your legs up there fast enough. Your veins are very large in your body. He said, you may be facing, experiencing some thrombosis in your lower parts of your legs. So I want you to wear these stockings. Just make sure you get the right ones that fit. And guys, since I put them on, I'm not saying it has worked 100% yet, but it's a lot better than what it's been being. He told me, he said, you will, your legs won't be as tired anymore. He said, I want you to wear them all the time, except for when you take a bath, and when you go to bed at night. And I'm gonna tell you, today is a little creepy wearing them to start off with. Yeah, he has the full ones all the way up to yeah. to the top of his legs. So, I mean, they're from all the way. They're all the way. Now, they don't have any toes in them. These are toeless, but in order to find the ones I needed, I had to go with a specific variety because I'm so tall. He's tall and skinny, and they most people are not that way. Yeah. Uh, they're usually that need them, and so they had to measure him and make sure they got out just right. So we're going to order another pair if this seems. If this to seems work. to work. We're going to go ahead and order another pair just to have spares. Uh, but today has been a really good day. I've not had a lot of issues. Uh, my legs haven't got tired. I mean, it's and been. We worked on the barn. Yes, we worked on the barn all we went morning. Over, well, I went over this morning and it just was driving me crazy because he's always saying, I can't get to this, I can't get to that, I need to move this in order to get over there. And I looked at him today and I said, I'm here, what we need to do. We got to take and move. So we moved boards up into the attic that needed moving up into the attic. We moved fertilizer around where it was going to go into its permanent yeah. place. We moved everything and rearranged and cleaned up. He parked my Kubota under there. Yep. Um, my Kubota. He had cub. his and the Cub. We had all the tractors in there until he decided he wanted his tractor back here at the house. Yeah. And 
But I mean, it's so clean and neat looking now. Yes, very, and very well organized. We got Mr. Mickey from uh, Hills Mills. We got all his stickers. Danny bound them together so he can pick them up when he yep. makes his next trip. And we just made it look nice in there. It was kind of getting a little junky. Yeah. Somebody says, Danny, one y'all don't have blackout curtains. No, we have we have actual blinds. Now you can use either one. You can either use the big wide blinds. These are actually or, uh, or blackout curtains. These, these are called uh, blackout blinds. Yeah, these are blackout blinds. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, we have those on most of our windows here. Uh, we had we had just ordered some more. I think the dining room was the last of the windows to put them on. And it made a huge difference in the dining yeah. room. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know when should they plant their blueberry bushes? It's in containers. Just wait till the fall. It's best to do it in the fall. Oh. Uh, somebody says, why didn't he ask these questions? Because I guess Danny never mentioned um, the the. Well, to be honest, we let me, let me tell you how good of a doctor he is. Um, I told him, you know, a lot of doctors that get kind of ticked off at you because when I looked at him, I told him, I says, let's get this right, okay? I said, I got doctors around the world. I got doctors literally in several parts of the world I'm sending my paperwork to and they're telling me what they believe is wrong. And I told him that. I said, now you tell me what you think and we're going to compare all these notes. And I said, you know, we're going to see how we stand here. And I'm your friend, but I need a doctor right now. And he looked at me and he said, you know what? He said, he said, I don't have a problem with you sending it to all the other doctors in the world. He said, because that's how we learn. He said, I may not know everything and they may figure out something that I don't know. And I'd really be interested in learning something if they can help figure this thing out. He said, but I think I can tell you what's wrong based on the last blood test that you had and all the things that you have going on with you. He said, if you was a normal person coming into my clinic, he said, I would say it's the Western diet. He said, but I know you, I've known you for 15 to 20 years. He said, you, you eat good, you eat organic, you don't drink junk, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do all this kind of stuff. He said, you eat good, healthy, rounded out meals that you raise yourself. You don't eat fast food, you don't go out to eat. He said, so for me thinking that you're not nutritionally sound is out of the question. He said, your blood work is freaking perfect. He said, I don't have a soul who comes in here that has the blood work you have. Your heart, too. And he said, your heart, he said, the fraction they did on your heart showed that it was a 60. He said, I've never hardly ever seen a 60. He said, your heart's stronger than any heart I've ever seen. He said, so, he said, I have to rule all this stuff out, and we got to start looking at some symptoms that you're having. We never told anybody about your feet and your legs because no. we didn't even connect the two. This was the first time anybody's asked about well, that we know of. I don't remember him asking before, but no. Danny got to notice it in the last few months, the, the swelling and the purpleness. He says, yeah. man, at times he goes, I can't believe how purple my legs are. And why neither one of us thought to say anything? We just didn't. I, I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes the heart and the feet are way apart and just don't connect things. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I want to know, am I still using my urine on my plants? Yes, I use my urine every day. I go, I don't use it all the time on one particular plant. I mean, I just, I swap around all kinds of different plants. I'm using it on everything. And literally, everything I'm putting on is flourishing. What do I think about drinking water out of copper vessels for the health and healing? Uh, yes, uh, anything, if you drink out of silver, gold, copper, anything like this. Uh, the ancient kings, that's why all their vessels used to be silver and gold and copper because they knew that they got very uh, uh, nutritious minerals and stuff like this back out of these things. As a matter of fact, my cattle water, watering barrels, I have copper pipes thrown over in my water barrels for my cattle to keep down algae and plus put copper back in the water. Was it too late to plant squash and eggplant in nope, it's, Alabama? Yes, you got plenty of time. Uh, when should you trim peach trees? Do it in the early spring. Don't do it in the fall. Paula said her feet hurt just before she had a heart attack. How many different things do you grow on the homestead? Good Lord. Yeah. It would be easier for us to say what we don't grow. It would probably be easier to say what we don't grow than what 
We oh. have a variety of fruit oh. trees, nut trees, and berry trees, berry bushes. And she's trees. I mean, we uh, grow things like celery, uh, Brussels sprouts, um, beets. artichokes. We have grown beets before. We've grown before, beets before, but beets, artichokes, sunchokes. We, we don't, don't do all that. We don't do all that kind of stuff. We do things like pineapples and yes. oranges and lemons and limes and tangerines and bananas and. Uh, well, we're, we have never actually grown our own banana. We get them on there, and it so, always gets a always, freeze. Yeah. But uh, we got the banana trees, and we do have bananas that just don't never produce quite. Yeah, we always get a little freeze uh, right there. In Danny's the growing grapes. I've got grapes, yes, uh, seedless grapes. Uh, somebody asked a while ago how to know when to pick Concord grapes. Uh, really, I don't know how you would know exactly. Mine, well, my white seedless ones, they kind of turned a little bit of a, uh, a yellowish color. Not dark green, but a little yellowish color. And I pulled one of them off, and it was perfect. So... The Concord grapes, I would say just test them. And when they get to the taste and the flavor mm -hmm. that you would like and the sweetness, then go ahead and harvest them. Um, the pineapples. When you start a pineapple, do you put it in sunlight? Yes, you need to put pineapples in sunlight. Um, I got videos on it. We have videos on showing how to plant them things, how to prepare on them. Crazy days. Uh, some's on crazy days, some's on deep south. The majority of them are on crazy days. Yeah. Um, Y'all, if y'all are not watching my channel, go over and subscribe. When I hit 25,000 subscribers, I am going to do a giveaway. It's been dragging for six months now. I think I like less than 1,500 or something, but I, I want to do a giveaway over there. Most of my cooking videos now go over there. A lot of the canon videos and things like that still go over on crazy days. They want to know, are we going to be selling any turmeric this I don't oh. know yet. It, it's beautiful in my hot tunnel. Hers is pretty. We just don't know yet. I just, if I do, it won't be much because I want to be able to save what I need for the next planting. Plus, I took in uh, freeze dried turmeric last year and I love it. So I'm probably going to freeze dry some more just to have. Uh, I saw one go, something about water went by. I didn't get to see what it. What is the best time to transplant pineapples to a bigger pot? Uh, any time. Well, I can do it any time, really. I mean, pineapples. Pineapples require a lot of nitrogen and a lot of uh, potassium. What was the best harvest year you ever had? Ooh, uh, two or three years. About ago. two or three years ago, we had like six hundred pounds of Irish potatoes and, gosh, like eight hundred pounds of sweet potatoes and everything. We produced. had green beans running out of our ears. I mean, I was, tomatoes. It has been two, if not three years ago, yeah. because when we had that big of a harvest, Danny says, we had this big of a harvest for what, for some reason. It doesn't mean the next few years are going to be slim. And that's kind of how we look at it. God gives you an abundance because you might not have it the next year. Uh, Megan says, our peaches rot before we can pick them. Any advice on it? That, it sounds like a bacterial problem. Uh, you may need a fungicide or something like that on them, or you may have worms in them. And if if, if worms are getting in them, they <clears throat> excuse me, they'll rot before you can pick them. Uh, it's uh, it's it's hard to say unless I actually see the peach to know. Um, let's see. Can you can anything you cook, or do you have to use a ball recipe? Uh, I've never canned things I cooked. I don't know if you're talking about like food and putting it in jars and then canning it. I don't know, but now peas, beans, anything, any vegetable pretty much can be canned, but I always recommend a ball book or a canning book that tells you the times and pressure for your area. Don't just wing it. Where can you get potatoes to plant now? Uh, it's not the time to plant potatoes. I mean, if you don't have them already saved up, uh, then seed potatoes aren't in. Now we have our own. We're gonna plant some for the fall here pretty shortly. But if you're looking to buy them from a seed company, they're just not gonna sell them till spring. Somebody wants to know where can you get bay leaf to grow at home? I'm not 100% sure. Miss Lippy gave us our bay tree about three or four years ago, three years ago, I guess. 
and we still have it. It's growing excellent. And Danny rooted Miss Slippy one because she lost hers when she moved to Kentucky and back to Louisiana. Um, she didn't, her bay tree died. And uh, so we rooted her one, but I don't know where you would get them. I don't um, know. Right off. Do we use well water to drink and bathe? Yes. Well water is all we use. Don't ever use city or community water with chlorine in it. That is one of the worst things you can put on your body or in your body. We don't even bathe. If I go somewhere, I won't even bathe in chlorine. Uh, Nola girl says, my pineapple took root, root right away. Yes. All right. They, they're real easy to root. I mean, the thing, you can't hardly kill them. What Do you buy we? most of your seeds or save your own? We save all of our own seeds. Um, we buy specialty seeds that yeah. we don't already have, and then when he plants them, we save those seeds so we have them from then on, yeah. if it's possible. The only exception would be carrots. Carrots yeah, is carrot a seeds, thing. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. How's our fig tree doing? Danny, mine is loaded again. Our fig tree did real good, and we've been... Our second crop, one tonight's just been going by picking them off, eating them. I mean, we just enjoying and having fresh ones on the second crop. Can I purchase store-bought small potatoes and grow them now? Scott, where you it depends on what, if, if you buy organic ones, yes. But if you just go to a grocery store, they got sprout nip sprayed on them. And that's why we don't eat potatoes from the store if we can help it because they've been sprayed with sprout nip, a chemical that prevents them from actually sprouting. Is it better to transplant fig trees in the fall or the spring? Uh, it's better to do it in the fall. All right. Uh, and but when you do plant them in the fall, mulch them real heavy. Pile hay all up around them. Do whatever you got to do. Straw, whatever you got. Leaves, pile them because they will freeze in the wintertime if you're not careful. Okay, they're asking what is the name of my channel. Miss Lippy has it put up a link. It's called Crazy Days, and it's D-A-Z-E-S. That's why a lot of people can't find it. They don't know how I spelled it. It's D-A-Z-E-S. Yes. They're saying the Growers Exchange sells bay trees, and I saw somebody else, I think Stark Brothers, and some of them may sell um, bay trees. So you might ju you just got to hit all the, the nurseries and stuff, and you'll eventually find it. Um, no, I don't swim in pools. And somebody said, that was going to say, darn, I was going to invite you to come swim in my pool. I said, nope. Your skin is the biggest sponge on your body, and you jump in a pool full of chlorine, and you're just giving yourself cancer. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, you're inviting cancer into your body. Why are you planting in pots and raised beds inside the greenhouse? Why am I what now? Planting in pots and raised beds. When we plant in pots because we have fire ants where we live at. If we don't put the pots up off the ground, fire ants will invade the pots and take them over. And our raised beds, uh, we do that because we can sit on the edge of the raised bed rather than have to get down and bend over. And we can harvest and tend them real easy because we can sit on the edges of the bed. Okay, somebody asked, do I peel the turmeric when I freeze dry it? Yes, I do. Because once you... Freeze dry it, you can just, I cut mine in little tiny pieces. You can pop it in your mouth and just chew it and it goes away and you get the benefits because it saves all the nutrition. And uh, I made like some uh, electrolytes type water for Danny this week. And I put a little bit of lemon, turmeric, and ginger over in it and just let it sit there for a while and it gives it that flavor. He gets the uh, all the benefits of it. So... It's got some good properties. What kind of ducks were you considering? Well, oh, we're not getting. We're not that. actually going to get. We decided against the ducks. But, uh, but were the, they were called the. Uh, it was something odd. Uh, it was an odd name, Ancora, Anacon, Ancora, Ancona, uh, or something, Orcana, or something like that. Uh, hello from State Line, Mississippi. Bobby, thank, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate that. Um, Did you custom make your high tunnels? No, we bought the kits from Grower Solutions. We have a link in the description down below. You get a 10% discount on your first purchase with them. Uh, but now that the 
the end wall designs are my design. And the inside. And all the insides are my design. We just got the metal frame and the plastic and the shade cloth from Grower Solutions. I grow about four different types of ginger. Somebody's asking, do I grow ginger? Um, I have different types of ginger all in different places around. And some of it's medicinal. Some of it's um, safe for eating. Yeah. And some of it's just ornamental type ginger. Uh, the question was asked, how far apart should we plant stuff to keep it from cross pollinating? A lot of it has to depend on what it is. You know, corn can pollinate up to a half a mile away. Uh, but most things uh, on our homestead here, we keep them about 100 yards apart. Uh, we try, which reason we have three and four different gardens all over our property in different places is because we can plant stuff in each different garden and still be able to save our seeds without them cross pollinating. Um, what does the future hold? Susan. I don't have time to tell you on here. Susan says it's 4.45 in Lithuania. <laughs> oh, wow. We got to talk to Susan this week. We got to talk to her. It was a blessing. Yes. Uh, How much was the high total? I don't remember, Jen. Uh, the prices have went up. They've the gone prices up. Prices of everything going up. We hadn't bought a high tunnel in what three years or something. Two. Two years. Yeah. We had a third high tunnel a year and a half ago. About. Wow. And you just have to call Tyler and him and ask them, and see what they are because I mean it. And, and tell them Deep South Homestead you want the code or whatever we use and uh, get your discount and see what it is. I mean, I think you get free shipping or you used to get free shipping. With I don't it. know about that. I don't know if they still do that or not. Uh, yes, we do grow comfrey. Uh, we have both types, block four and four, 14. Yeah, block four and block 14. Uh, right. Where did we buy our blinds at? We actually ordered them online. Uh, I don't know. There's a blind said. company. They custom built them for us because we had to send the measurements of the windows in and everything and they custom built them. Okay. Uh, not cheap, let me tell you that. Let's see. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. You're better off asking who holds... I agree with that totally. You're better off asking who holds the future than what does the future hold. Yeah. Because we, we're... It's, that's, I can sit here and go on for the next two hours about things that they're going to happen in the future. Gonna stress us out. All it's going to do is stress everybody out and it's not going to benefit nobody because there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing I can do about it. And it, it's just it's just not worth it. All right. What ways do you use cucumbers, pickled, canned? I've used, I, love, I like pickles or cucumbers fresh. That is my number one. I have juiced them and put the juice in ice cube trays and made ice cubes for drinks later. Uh, I make sweet pickles, sweet relish, dill relish, dill pickles, uh, red hot candy pickles. I mean, I've made refrigerator pickles. When I have a supply, I just use them in all kinds of ways. Uh, do you ever sell cuttings from your grandpa fig? Not, I haven't. Uh... I actually have another starting of it. I finally got one of them rooted, and I got it uh, out here in the front, so we're going to see how it works out. But. David says, is Danny Cord doing great? Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh -huh. More pigs soon. Actually, Wanda actually done bought and paid for our pig. For the fall. For the, well, for winter, because it'd be in December. The guy's going to, we have plenty of meat to last us till December. But in December, our friend of ours... Uh, the one we actually got the pigs from. Yeah, that's... He a, raises uh, pigs and uh, for people. Yes. That's what he does. And then he takes them to the processor and you pay the processor. You pay him to raise them and you pay the processor. And yeah. since we didn't want to raise another pig right now, uh, when he put up that he had some uh, litter born, I said, look, I want one. So I went ahead and paid for ours for December because... But I think we'll be out of bacon. Yeah, we'll be out of bacon. The well, main yeah, reason we worry is bacon. That. So uh, it's called Buddy Farms. Yes, he's yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, here in Wiggins. Um, somebody asked the Danny what to look for when buying a Cub tractor. Uh, make sure it's in decent condition because 
don't get something that's a piece of junk. Make sure the motor hadn't been frozen, and busted, and welded back together, and that the head's not cracked, and you know it's it, the the housing rear ends hadn't been broke on it and re welded because that's a big issue with the Cub. Uh, check all the rear end, make sure there's been no breaks or wells on any of that. I mean, those are things that you want to look for. And two or three people's asked about the Hopi corn too. The Hopi corn's doing good. Um, it's uh, it's several different stages because the seeds was bad and I actually had to replant. Um, do we have hired help? No. Well, Karen, actually, my granddaughter's been coming and helping me with the house. That's the hired help. That's our hired help cleaning the house. But uh, as far as all of our work outside, no, we do all of our own work. Yeah, Faith started coming about a month ago um, and helping me. And that way I'm getting all the major cleaning done, things like that. And uh, we're, we went to the cabin this week and we cleaned top to bottom on the cabin. Uh, so it's been great having her once a week come in and, and just help me with that type of stuff. Um, we got a lot of a lot of comments on Cub tractors tonight. Uh, guys, if you're looking for Cub tractors, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a Cub or Super A, Super C, all of them. Check those rear planetary systems on them. Uh, my daddy told me that when I was a kid. He told me, he said, son, because those things... There's some bolts in them that's bad about working loose up there next to the fenders, and people don't pay attention to that. They don't keep them tight, and the housings on those things will break. Because that little old tractors, them tractors will pull more than you think they will. And they got them big old braking plows and turn plows and discs and all that's made to go on them. And if you ain't careful, them rear axles will break on them things and have to be brazed or cast iron welded back together and stuff, or or the blocks will be cracked and stuff like this. I mean. You, you know, you just pay attention to those kind of things because uh, you can get stuck with, with a piece of junk if you're not careful. And it ain't, them things ain't cheap to fix. I mean, I'm going I'm to just be honest with you. This one has about had a conniving conniption over mine because I probably got $10,000 in mine. Not up to fifteen. People ain't buying it under fifteen. Watch this done sold that. So that tractor ain't leaving here for less than fifteen thousand dollars because it looks like a brand new one right now. I mean, it looks so brand if I'm new. Interested? <laughs> you got fifteen thousand. We'll start talking. Okay. Um, somebody wanted to know how do I keep the house clean while I'm canning and things like that. I just I don't overburden myself when I'm canning. I don't can like so much that it I can't get other things done. Right. While I'm canning, if I've got things I need to be putting in the oven, I'm throwing them in the oven to cook. If I'm canning, I've got clothes in the washing machine. When one thing, like if I'm sitting here putting something in a jar, I get it over in the canner, I go back to the washing machine, put it in the dryer, I bounce back and forth. Danny helps me by sweeping the floors when they need it and things Cook like breakfast that. breakfast in the morning. He cooks breakfast every morning. Um, we just kind of work around it. And he keeps things reasonably picked up. Now, I say, say that reasonable because sometimes he is the worst to just lay stuff everywhere. And I'll go behind him going, pick up, pick up, pick up. But our house looks lived in most of the time. One reason we had Faith come in and help us is because of the dusting and stuff like that. And all this white stuff you see is all around. And it gets dusty, especially once we use the wood heater. And so she came in. She's been helping with that little bit and uh, mopping floors and things like that because the floor don't get mopped as often if it's just me and Danny. It gets swept, Yeah. and I'll just make myself mop sometimes. So you just have to prioritize. If canning comes first, you have to work around it. I don't just sit while I'm canning. Um, Jimmy T. West is on here, and uh, good to see Joey on here. And he's right. Check that drop-down section on that Cub or Super A, Super C's, or the 140s, all these. Just check that drop-down section because it's if it's going to be a problem, that's where it'll be at. Now, there's been a lot of comments went this by one, here. Laura's asking about onions. My onions did lousy this year. If I overwinter them, will I be able to harvest them next year or will I have to wait? It depends on where you live at. Uh, if, if you're living Zone 8, you want to plant in November. Uh, and overwinter them and really pour the nitrogen to them all winter long because the more leaves you get on them, the bigger the bulb will be and they'll bulb up next spring. But if you live in a colder climate, you'll probably have to wait till the spring to plant. Uh, when do you plant garlic and how deep? Uh, 
depends on where you live at and what kind of garlic you're planting. Um, we usually plant our garlic in the fall and we harvest it in the early summer and we plant it about two inches deep. So it just depends on where you live. We're in zone eight. All right. I do plan, let's see, that's Coastal Redwood Homestead. I do plan on selling some of the peppercorns on Etsy. I've just got to get out there and see about how many I have. So be looking for that possibly this next week because I'm going to tell y'all what, them peppercorns is taking over my greenhouse. They are. And at some point I've got to down them and I have chopped off and chopped off and chopped off. And so if people are willing to not have rooted ones, I have quite a few that are rooted, but if they're willing to buy the just pieces and try to root them themselves, I think I'm going to do that too. I'll, I'll, I'll probably have it on there two ways. One will be rooted and one will not. The rooted will be limited, very limited. But they root real fast, usually. Yeah. Okay. Okay, a lot of good comments. Uh, when will, somebody keeps asking the same question. When will the dollar be worthless? It's already worthless. I mean, uh, it's already down to, what is it, 35 cents now, I think, is what the dollar's worth. Uh, <laughs> so, it's... I, I'm not going to go there on this channel right now. Grizz um, said he... I asked him, he Grizz270 was live the other day, and he was out grilling. Thank you, Bobby. Grilling on his new gr his little grill he's built with um, outside, and I asked him where the cats were. Yeah, the, and uh, he said he had to change to Chinese chicken. Oh, <laughs> uh, would I consider a John Deere Model M? I can't afford a decent cub or a. Just get what you can get. I mean, any of the old tractors are really, really good. I'm not going to lie to you. It I just like a cub because that was what I grew up with. Uh, the the mow lines, I mean, the John Deere's, I mean, all these, uh, the uh, uh, Massey Ferguson's, the old TO 35s, these are all good tractors. Um, the old uh, Jubilees, 8 in Fords, I mean, you can't wear these things out. Uh, we bunch logs with an old 8 in Ford. I mean, them things are tough as nails. I mean, any of these old tractors are good vintage pieces of equipment. Mine just happens to be the cub because that's what I was raised with. Do we grow onions from seed? Yes, Danny has done that yes. several times and we do have onion seeds. When, when it's feasible, we order starts from Dixondale. But when he gets time and he gets them started, he's been doing them from seed. Oh. Hmm. Uh, I grew peppermint and it went to seed. Now I have enough to plant an acre. Yes. Yes. Peppermint, once it goes to seed, it's there. It's, it's a very pot. invasive plant. We put ours in pots. If you put it out somewhere, it'll take over. Yeah, take a dollar to the grocery store and you'll see how worthless it is. Yeah. You can't buy anything for a dollar hardly. Right. There's very little under a dollar. Um, I had thought about doing a grocery video, taking like $25 and heading into the grocery store and do a prep video to see how much we could buy for $25. Because once a month, if you could spend $25, you could build your prep cabinet up. Do we use a pressure canner only or do we water bath? We do both. We water bath and we pressure can. And I freeze dry. Well, we do we do lots of stuff. Now, we, we don't... Uh, dehydrate anymore, but we do freeze dry a lot of stuff. What is my favorite cucumber? It is the pickling cucumber, national pickling. My onion seeds didn't sprout. What did I do wrong? Onion seeds are kind of hard to get to come up anyway. If the soil is not the right temperature, if it's not the right consistency of moisture, if it gets too hard on the top, I mean, there's a lot of variables with onion seeds. I mean, the best way is to put them in little containers and just cover them and wait for the seeds to sprout underneath the cover and then take it off. Yeah. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, we're already at nine o'clock. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize it got that late that fast. Yeah, there, a lot of them are saying they're glad to hear that, you know, any of them. Yeah, Danny just preferred the cub 
But any of those old tractors, y'all. Yeah, any of them. Old tractor, you better hang on. I mean, Don't get of it. When Wendy and I first got married, I had an old, uh, uh, an old Oliver tractor, and uh, I decided, I just did. Well, it was my daddy's tractor. I drove it when I was a kid. Uh, and I decided I didn't want it. And a guy sent a hot shot rig all the way from Texas <laughs> over here to get that tractor because he wanted it. I mean, and I told him, I said, look, it uses a little oil. And he said, I don't care. I want it, you know. And that was probably eight twice. years ago. That was eight years ago, yeah. And we still have the... I still have the... Uh, what's it called? The Belarus, the 205. We still have the Belarus. Uh, uh, I think it's a 205. Uh, a Belarus. I'm probably going to sell it, but it, the steering's locked up on it right now. I hadn't had a chance to get out there and fix it or anything, but um, but I'm probably going to get rid of the Belarus. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What is the largest sweet potato you've grown? <laughs> oh, I've grown some huge sweet potatoes now. Some of them go up to 10 pounds. Yeah. We call them the old mother potato. Two or three years ago, we had several that got up like huge. We don't usually leave them till they get that big, but for some reason that year we had a three or four. Yeah. Um, prayers for a sister, brother, and friend. Uh, we don't dehydrate because I don't. We're here in the South. It's very humid. Too much humidity. Thirty miles from the Gulf Coast, we are in that humid area where the humidity is like. 80 plus most all the time. And I have found that even by sealing them in vacuum, in mylar and everything, they still ruin. Um, I de dehydrated green beans. We did tomatoes, some English peas, some carrots. We did quite a few things about four or five years ago. And when I was cleaning out and going through all my stuff, I kept smelling something that smelled mildewed. And so when I went through it, all my bags were sealed. But when I opened them up inside a sealed bag, they were all mildewed. So that meant either I didn't get all the humidity out or all the moisture or something. And they ran, I always run mine longer than it says to run them. I go like twice as long sometimes because I'm a fanatic about it. What are you doing wrong? Some lids don't seal in my ball jars when canning with my water bath. Water bath is the one thing I've had issues with too. Yeah. Um, most of the time they'll all seal. But in the last six months, I think I've had two or three here and there that don't seal. And it, it's been uh, water bathing and it's usually... The other day I had one that didn't seal. It was uh Thanks, sauce. Ron. We appreciate that, brother. Uh, the sauce, uh, pear sauce. Yeah. All the canned pears, every one of those sealed. But when I did the pear sauce, one of them didn't seal. So I don't know if it was just a fluke or what. Um, Soul Sister said, did we get their package? I mean, I don't, you get all the packages. I don't know. Uh, you had to tell me what was in the package because we got quite a few things and I don't know what name you would have had on it. I'm sorry. Um, I got some seeds if it, and I got book and I'm trying to think we got letters and I'm trying to think what else we got this week. I know seeds in the book I do know those two. So it's according to what you sent. Okay. Uh, thank you, Grizz, for stopping by. Yeah. Um, okay. Yo, uh, we asked prayer for Sassy's oldest daughter last week, and yeah. uh, her daughter had um, surgery this week. It was almost an all-day surgery because she was broken up really bad from head to toe on one side, and uh, she made it through the surgery. She's doing pretty good right now, but there's still uh, a lot of things going on, and uh, the other... Her boyfriend did not make it. He passed away this week, so we want to keep all of them, the families, in prayer. Um, there was somebody asked, um, cul-de-sac, her son and her grandson both are doing better this week. We asked prayer for them, so there are praise reports there. Yeah. Um, 
Lots of prayer requests coming through, guys. Somebody want to know where do we get the fan back here? You can get them from Lehman's uh, uh, Hardware online. You can go. Uh, they have a catalog you can get them from. Um, Granny T saying she's worried about her freeze dryer food. Ours was crunchy when they bagged it, but doesn't feel crunchy now. When we first started yep. doing that, we had some that did that. And what I did, um, in order not to lose it, I would open those and go ahead and use them or open it and use some of it and put it in the fridge and then continue using it. Um, we had to learn in our humidity. We were taking things because my freeze dryer is outside in the she shed and I was bringing all the trays in the house. Even when it was raining and stuff like that, I was bringing mine in, which meant they got moisture from out there to in here. You have to learn that the least amount of exposure to the air you yeah. give it, the better off you are. So, And I run mine more than one cycle. I usually prolong the cycle anywhere from six to eight hours. If it says it's fixing to cut off, I run it longer because I, if you can feel cold in the middle of it, it's not finished. Run it longer. You shouldn't feel cold in your freeze-dried food. So that's just a few little tips. Um, my peach leaves are turning yellow. Any suggestions? It's that time of the year, Darlene. Ours are doing the same thing. How much wood would you think a person would need to warm a house and cook? Oh, uh, depends on what size house you got, what part of the country you live in, and how much you eat. Uh, <laughs> it could be from six cords to 15 cords. It just depends. Depends on how well your house is insulated, what size it is. I mean, there's a lot of variables in that. Um, okay. Miss Drew Miller, we want to keep her in prayers. Um she says she sent a small jar of raw organic honey from her bees to us. I probably have not gotten that yet. Yeah, we probably haven't got that one yet. Uh, uh, and if you send it to the post office, I have not been to the post office in two or three days. So I will go Monday. And if you send it here, we just haven't got it yet. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and pray tonight guys lord thank you so much for being so good to us uh father we we come before you we humbly approach the throne of grace father they sent a lot of requests here tonight for people who are not feeling well uh there's been a lot of requests for people who's got issues going on in their life and and father i want to i want to speak healing on their body right now i want to come before you father as a servant of the king and, and uh, as a uh, intercessor, and I want to ask that you give them uh, healing. Uh, the ones that's been mentioned here tonight, uh, Sassy's daughter, Lord, it was in the wreck, and Lord, all the all the other ones here, just so many here to mention, Father. Uh, the old devil is having a heyday today. Uh, I saw where people's got problems with diabetes and all kinds of different things. Lord, I'm speaking healing on their body tonight in the name of Christ. I pray that their bodies are healed tonight, Father, of all the things that are wrong with them. And, and Lord, I, I just want to tell you we love you. You've been so good to each and every one of us. I want to pray uh, that our finances tonight, Lord, I want to speak that our finances increase, Father, and that we have plenty of money to do the things that we all need to do with, Father, that we're blessed in our finances. Lord, that we're blessed uh, all of us can have the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, so that we can live a joyful and a peaceful life here. And, and Father, and I want to pray for the, the mental side of everything, Lord, because the stress, the depression, the anxieties, all these things, uh, the devil's using all these things, Father, to work on us. And many people don't realize that when they have these issues, they have a uh, magnesium deficiency in their body. And, and they're thinking it's because of all the events that's going on around them. Well, it, it is the events, but when you don't have the proper amount of magnesium in your body, your body can't deal with the stress and all the cortisol builds up. Lord, it's a big, it's a big mess. It just goes on inside the body. And Father, uh, the adrenals kick in and, and we, we, get, we get adrenal fatigue. All these kind of things start attacking our body and the devil just loves it. So I'm praying tonight for the mental side of everybody, Lord, that they can... 
that they can get a victory over this, Father. And Lord, I just want to just speak success on everyone in the chat tonight, Lord. I want to speak that everyone's crops will produce and they will produce abundantly and everyone's animals will, will fold and they'll all do well, Lord. Everybody's chickens will do well. Their homes will be well. Their lives will be well, Father. I want to pray for all these things tonight. In the name of Christ, I want to ask all these things, Lord. And Father, I want to thank you for the praise items tonight. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate people who get answers to their prayers, Father. We get answers to our prayers all the time, and I'm thanking you for it. I'm lifting up the name of Christ, and I'm saying, Father, thank you for being so gracious and so loving to us now. Lord, I want to uh, pray for the, the condition of our country. Father, we've slid even further back this past couple of weeks when our president signed into action this new executive order, Lord, that literally takes all of our freedom away from us now. And Father, I'm praying that uh, we can overturn this and that it will never, ever come to fruition, Father. So I'm just praying for that. I'm praying for the millions of lives that's been taken innocently in our country, Father, through the, through the, the, the sin of the, the shed of blood, Father, for the unborn and things like this, Father. I'm praying for our country because we know that the curse that's come upon our country has been because of that particular sin. And when you've taken over 60 million lives uh, of, of the innocent, Father, then we know there has to be a judgment for that, Father. And we pray that you'll be kind to your people while you judge this nation now. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Man, our air must be off or something. <laughs> I bumped it down a notch. It's, it's just not kicked on. Y'all, Danny did an interview with Cindy from yes. Sacred Gardens. And I did one on Crazy Days. So if you guys will go over and check out Crazy Days and get to know Cindy. We had um, people ask, saying things with Danny's interview and saying different things there. And if they would go over and watch the interview I did with her, she talks about her life a little bit more over there where her and Danny just dealt mainly with plants. Yeah. And we talked about um, culinary herbs for medicine on mine. And so I'm going to have Cindy back again. We hope in a few weeks, two or three weeks, we'll set it up again. And um, hopefully the next time on my channel, we'll be talking about how to make tinctures and uh, yeah. all this kind of stuff. That was one of the main questions people had was how she does all that or, or how they could I'm do that. While you said I'm going to get, somebody's asking a question. If I can get over here and get this, I'm going to. Mm. Okay. Um, what are you, I don't know what he's going after, but what's your cord? He's having yeah, I'm a I'm having to step cord. over cord with a. With a bad leg. Yeah, I want to make sure I get this right. Okay. Executive Order 14067. Um, you can go check that executive order out. People can keep asking what executive order is it. And um, uh, I, I think you'll be shocked when you see it. I mean, it's not good. <laughs> yes. Uh, so y'all kind of check that out. Um yeah, somebody's putting it up there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Y'all, uh, Danny and I are probably not going to do a whole lot of interviews. I may do some on um, Crazy Days more because I love doing the interviews. But Danny's probably not going to do as many right now until everything in his system kind of settles down. He's backing out of some things and... Uh, we're not putting up as many videos. This week I had several little short things and stuff that uh, things get piled up sometimes and I just have to throw them up to get them caught up. <laughs> yeah, so I was saying, how do you keep a black snake out of your chicken coop? We, if he gets used to coming there, I hate to say it, the only way is just to eradicate him. Uh, I hate to, you know, any non-poisonous snakes we hate to get rid of. But, uh, but once they figure out that they can come in there and get eggs, now you can buy the fake eggs and put in there and when they swallow it a lot of times that'll do the job for you but um uh, we use golf balls in ours can you tell that number again 
one four zero six seven. Yeah. Executive order one four zero six seven. Is that the tip for tonight? That's the tip for tonight. Yes. Check out this executive order and guys pray that the Lord will help us in some way or other overturn this because this was while we had these other false flags going on, this was done in secret and we was not told about it. So um, it's it's not good. Uh, our sovereignty was done away with. Your bank accounts done away with. I mean, they have the right to come in. Your they, they can take everything you own, basically. Yeah, I mean, having stuff in a banking account, I guess that's a tip. You can't really hide anything now. Right. And when people say they're going to move off into the woods and nobody's going to know anything, the satellites can pinpoint it. No, no, there's no way. No, it doesn't 5G, matter. once it, it kicks in full force, there's not a spot on this earth that they're not going to know what people are doing. They'll know when you go to the bathroom and how many eggs you eat in the morning and everything else if they want to know it. Uh, there's no way to hide. Yeah. There's no way. So just pray, have faith, and just live your life. I mean, that's all yeah. I Get ready for the next life. Yeah, the next big event. Somebody asked on the thing while I go, what was the next big event? <laughs> uh, guys, there's several big events fixing to happen, um, but I'm not going to go into that on this particular time right now. I mean, it's uh, you're going to see some new laws passed. We talked about this uh, the other day. Um, the IRS agents too, yeah. Yeah, about there're going to be some new indecency laws. Oh yeah, that was oh. passed uh, because of the uh, transgender. Thing that's going on uh, you'll be seeing some laws in the near future about women will be able to go topless and it won't be uh, it won't be they can't get in trouble for it in other words yeah. so I mean there, there's lots of things like this that's on our that, that's the in the making right now you're going to see so much indecency over the next year or two till it's just it's uncomprehensible yeah. how low everything's gotten well it's so. it's the hand of god's been lifted off in the nation now and, and, and people and evil. Evil. we've been turned over to reprobate minds like it says in romans and, and people don't know right from wrong anymore you have a whole generation that grew up without being taught right and wrong now i know some of you raised your kids right i'm not saying every kid but you have the majority of the world has raised their children to not know right and wrong. All kids were taught, you know, whatever you want, let mama get it, let daddy get it, and you know, yeah. and they don't understand consequences. When they get in trouble, mama or daddy covers for them or pays them their way out of it or, you know, whatever, and there's never any consequences for anything anymore. So, yeah. We just got to. Do what we need to do. And Melissa said, Melissa says, can't have a cell phone if you go off grid totally. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let me put it to you this way. There's also a law in the making and in the very near future, it's going to be illegal to not have a cell phone. Or some way for them to keep up. You know, it's because just like you have to have car insurance to drive a car on the road, they're going to make it mandatory that every citizen must have a cell phone. That's in the future coming up here. For your own and good. It's... it's I don't have a cell phone, and I'll probably be fine, but... Um, well, technically, you have one. It's not turned on. I have on. one. It's just not turned I'm on. I'm not paying a bill. We canceled it, yeah. So if they make... It would have to be turned on. They'll have to make something, but he does own one. Yeah, I do own one. I just don't... Uh, uh, somebody keeps asking how to cure strawberry rust disease. I don't actually know. Uh, we don't have that problem where we're at. Um, so I'm not, I don't really know the answer to that. Yeah. Okay, we got to get off here, guys. Yes. Because um, Miss Wanda's getting sleepy. Yeah, Miss Wanda's getting sleepier. Thank you guys once again for tuning in here tonight with us and, uh, and, and, and taking and spending some time with us here.
You know, it's, yeah, I, I had to take care of this from this one here. Anyway, guys, we'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>